Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. So today is mail call, another mail call today. I've been ordering bits and pieces lately, so I've got a whole lot of stuff that turned up. I got this, and I got this, and I got this, and I got this. Four boxes to open. So um, let's, uh, let's pop over to the bench and see what we've got. Here we are on the bench. Now, uh, <coughs> I think the two bags are from AliExpress. The uh, two boxes might be from eBay. So I'll have to pick a different... Uh... I'll have to pick a different title for the uh, video because it's not all cheap stuff from AliExpress today. It's a little bit of cheap stuff from AliExpress. I don't know what this is. Oh, wow. <coughs> All right. It's a, it's a 10 megapixel camera in pink. I have no memory of buying this. I'm going to have to go and have a look and see what I've done. I think I've been sent the wrong thing. Because uh, I don't remember buying a cheapo 10 megapixel camera. Why would I do that? I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem to have... Oh yeah, it does. It's got a screw hole for mounting. Okay, and it's 16 megapixels. All right, there you go. Uh, it did come with instructions, and it came with a, a USB micro, micro B. All right. Well, that's interesting. I don't remember buying this. I, uh, I, I can't remember doing that. So I, I don't know. I can't account for this piece of equipment. Let's have a quick look at the at the instructions. Camera and video camcorder. Okay, just a lot of warnings here. Uh, okay, it is actually fairly extensive. Alright, so it's four pages, four pages. <coughs> Might as well read it, no time like the present. Please read and understand the safety measures here down describe before using the device. Please read all instruction guidelines before starting to use the device. Do not use the device near water. <clears throat> Do not use the device near water or let it come into contact with moisture. The device must not be exposed to dripping or splashing water and no object containing liquid should be placed on the device. Make sure no liquid can be spilled in the openings. Do not put on device. Blah, 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 blah. Note, please check if the battery is built in or need battery before using the camera. Note, please buy SD card before using the camera. The camera is supported. SD card max up to 128 gigs. Remark, the newly purchased memory card or the one has been used in other digital video camera shall be formatted prior to its usage in this video camera. Please back up all the important data in other media like hard disk CD-ROM before formatting. Application introduction. Some function will not be found because of different models. Please operate based on the practical function of equipment. One microphone, two power on off, three shuttered button. This is, use this button to take photo, shoot camera and voice record. T zoom in, W zoom out, uh, upward button, backward button, forward button, downward button. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see if it runs in USB mode. And if it does, it's just, it says it's a 16 megapixel camera. And I don't know how that um, compares to, assuming it's even true, I don't know how that compares to the other cheapo cameras I've got up there at the moment. But uh, anyway. There we go. <coughs> Camera. Fair enough. Let's do the other bag from China. What a 
we got? Open this guy, huh? Now we're gonna need. What are we gonna need? How about uh, this box opener? Let's see. This is not the right tool for the job. Let's try craft knife. Okay. Well, it's well packaged, that's for sure. Great big. Uh, Here it is. Put him away so I don't drop it on my foot. Now. Ah, it's a kit. It's one of the kits that I ordered. I'm surprised at how well packaged it was. It's really uh, well wrapped up, isn't it? Keep this uh, bubble wrap for later on. I do have a bubble wrap bag over on my door. So, let's have a look at our kit. Up, oh, it's sealed. I'll just grab a project box. We'll put that in there. All right, so there's a schematic. Uh, that looks like a, a display of some type. Uh, there's a bag full of goodies. It's uh, just a bunch of through-hole components. And this is the printed circuit board. And they've already gone to the trouble of installing the micros. Nice one. So there's just some um, through-hole stuff to add. This is the DSO-138 digital oscilloscope. So we're going to be making ourselves an oscilloscope, sort of. We'll just be putting these in here um, and following whatever instructions are in here. I suppose we could... Uh, no reason not to pop that out. So this is the uh, display, very cool, um, and I'm not going to throw that away yet, I'm going to keep that, I'm going to keep our stuff in here. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to get around to building this thing, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult either, does it? <sighs> there we go. So, uh, okay, got a couple of buttons and such. I'm looking forward to having a oscilloscope which uh, uh, doesn't have a case on it. Won't, it. won't it look pretty cool just sitting there on its own board? Hopefully I don't ever electrocute myself while I'm using it. All right, well, um, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a project. That's a project and it's in its project box, which is a good place for a project to be, at least until it's time to actually make the project. So, looking forward to that. We'll do that together on the channel soon. Uh, for now, we'll just stick him over here. Now, oh yes. <laughs> now, I, uh, I, I accidentally ordered 
uh, last time I ordered the wrong uh, brushes. Uh, what I wanted was these brushes with the great big honking um, flat heads. And these are great. I'm so glad. So uh, what happened was I accidentally ordered 50 of these other brushes. These ones you see with these silly little, little, little heads. And what I wanted was the ones with this really big head. So um, having made the mistake, I thought, ah, stuff it. And I went back and I got the... <laughs> I got the ones that I didn't get the first time. So now I've got 100 brushes, 50 flat ones like this, which seem really great, by the way, and, uh, and 50 of the other ones, which are, uh, are pretty uh, pid piddly. So uh, if, if you're going to be buying uh, brushes, I would certainly recommend that you get the flathead ones. These are great. Uh, they're much bigger, of course. Looks like one of them's lost its head. That's okay, I can, I can appreciate that. I lose my head from time to time too. Let me see if I can just file this. Uh, I'll file it later on. All right, so that's uh, brushes. I'm gonna have to think about where I keep the brushes. Oh, uh, but for now, the brushes can go in here, huh? There we go. Fair enough. <clears throat> All right. Now, what's next? Oh, yes, another kit, I believe. Oh, no, this may be the... Uh, this may be the box for that thing that I was just saying that I'd love to have the box not on. This is a box. It's been... Uh, it's just been cut out of a piece of uh, Perspex by the looks of it. So someone's got the CNC router or whatever you call that. Um, sorry, just trying to get organized here. So uh, yes, okay, well, look at that, nuts and bolts and pieces and such. Great. Now we'll have to figure this out, but basically, um, it's a it's a it's a container for the uh, for that project that we just saw earlier. Looks like actually quite involved, doesn't it? Let's see if we can figure it out together. We might make two videos: one making the uh, device, and the other putting the device in its box. We'll we'll see. That's a good problem to have. So I'm looking forward to doing that together with you. On the channel at some point in the future. All right, now what's in here? <sighs> All right, what have we got? Ah, this must be another kit. I did actually get a couple of kits, so looking forward to seeing those. This is a kit. And what kind of a kit is this? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. All right, well, the Chinese instructions are uh, beyond me. Wow. Oh, it looks like it's a, uh, a square wave generator, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I'll figure out what this is and I'll let you know in the show notes. So, uh, yes, it looks like another kit there. Great. Doesn't look like it's going to be too hard to do either. It's got... Uh, just a couple of through hole components. Is there a, there must be a micro. There is a couple, a couple of uh, integrated circuits. I'm not sure what their specs are. Shall we find out? Why not, huh? Um, let's just see, what have we got? There's a little guy. 
And there's another little guy. And I oh know that's not an integrated circuit. This is. Alright. Yeah, this looks like two integrated circuits. What are they? Let's uh let's put the scope on. So uh let me see. Let me go over here. There we go. Alright. So uh let me throw you over to the scope and let's have a look and see what this is. Okay, it's an ICL 8038CC PD 2308. 2308 is probably manufactured in the year 2023 uh, in August, I reckon. So not sure what that chip is, but we'll look that up. And then there's another chip here. Uh, yeah, that looks that looks fairly good. Okay, so that's a 18M DSHY TL 082CP. I'll get the specs for both of these chips, and I'll I'll uh, let you know about them in the show notes. So, um, and I'll also figure out exactly what this uh, kit is. But I do believe uh, it's a um, a square wave generator. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Um, and I guess the other thing to do is just put this probe. It, got, it came with a probe. I believe that was the probe that came with the digital oscilloscope. So I'll just file that in the correct box as well. So here is another project box for this project. And I'll get rid of these. They're going in there. That's not broken. All right, and then, uh, oh, there we go. So uh, this one is a bag full of transistors, bag full of transistors. Uh, shall we put them in the thing? Why not? All right, well, uh, they're two N two 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 twos, so they should all be the same. Let's just have a look at uh, at one of them under the scope here. So, uh, what have we got? There it is, two N two 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 two. Looks like A three three one as well. I didn't know that. Maybe that's another name for it. This is my uh, this is my box of uh, two N two two twos just here. You can see. So uh, I'm just going to put all of these in there. There we go. next all right this is the eBay parcel so let's see what's in here my um, crim crimper. So uh, one of my viewers uh, told me about the uh, the ferrules, I believe they're called ferrules. And uh, and in order to use them, you need a particular type of 
um, clamp um, or crimper. So uh, I went and got myself one. That's what this is. So this is a, a, a feral crimper. I don't have any experience with this, but I, I did watch a couple of YouTube videos of people using one. So I've got some idea how they work. Look at this. So uh, basically you, you put a wire in one end and then you um, and then you uh, pull the crimper and it uh, it squeezes the wire in. Shall we shall we try? Shall we crimp something? What have we got to crimp? Uh, let's have a look in our little bag of goodies here. Uh, why don't we just crimp something onto the end of this bit of junk here, and we don't have to waste anything that we care about? So uh, I'll just use these wire cutters and uh, let's put that there and that there and just crimp him off. All right. So now we've got a little bit of wire coming out of the bottom there. Now you just take, let's do, uh, well we might as well do white to keep it with the color of the uh, of the wire, same color. So let's just put the uh, wire in there. Now I've never done this before so let's see how we go. And we'll put him in there and then squeeze it real tight. And what have we got? Fascinating. Seems to have held really quite well. Great. All right. Well, that's the uh, the feral crimper. I'll have to find a place to keep him. And uh, this. Oh, how annoying! It usually they come with a little tab, so you you can hang them, but not this one. That's all right. So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool little bit of equipment to have. And then the final box. Let me just uh, unwrap this. Now, this looks like an AliExpress box as well. So, uh, Oh dear, this is my uh, <laughs> solder bar. I ordered this yesterday at Amazon. I think it was Amazon, or maybe it was somewhere else. The instructions are in Chinese. So who knows what it says? Oops, something fell out. Oh, it's a certificate of uh, quality assurance or something. All right. All right, well, this is my new solder pot. There we go, just a little bit of tape here. All right. There we go, 150 watts, that's the one that I've got. Plug comes with an AU plug, that's good. Very convenient for me. So, that's it. Solder pot. So you put your solder in there and it heats up and then you can stick your wires in there and tin them. I paid $18 for this piece of equipment. That's 18 Aussie dollars. Something like $12 US not very much but there's not much to it there's just a control a switch and a, a tub uh, I'm gonna I'm looking forward to trying this out I'll just take the uh, 
the twisty thing off the uh, cordy thing. All right. So when I use this, I'm planning to not run it through my uh, UPS systems. So uh, I'll have to get an extension cord for it so I can plug it in over there. Anyway, that's a pretty cool piece of equipment to have. Uh, I'll have to get some solder that's uh, appropriate uh, for use in here. You, apparently you don't put um, stuff that's got flux in it in there. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't. I, I don't really know how to use this, and I, I couldn't find much information on it actually. And finding uh, solder that was really hard as well. I, I don't know um, what you put in there, but I found these sheets of like silver stuff. I'm going to try and get lead free for this. Um, my actual solder solder up the back there is leaded solder, which is often recommended, even though it's a bit dangerous. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to get lead free solder for this guy. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just have to uh, keep my eye out and see what I can find. But I'm looking at these things that are silver foil um, sort of things. So maybe that, that will do. We'll see. Anyway, sorry over the farewell cam and we'll wrap this up. And that's a wrap. So uh, uh, we got the, the feral, 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 feral crimper. <laughs> the new crimper and we tested it and it seems to work great so that's really cool and um, we got our new solder bath so looking forward to having a play with that um, there's a random camera that I just have no memory of ordering 16 megapixel camera um, but I'll plug it in and see if I can make use of it and uh, two uh, projects in project boxes over there one of them's a uh, uh, digital signal oscilloscope and the other one is I think a square wave generator but I'll I'll look that up later and I'll put it in the show notes so yeah that that, uh, that concludes today's uh, mail call so um, uh, thanks very much for watching and please remember to hit like and subscribe we're back back on the bench now I was just uh, getting ready to um, publish this video and I'm just editing it um, and I uh, discovered something while I was doing the research for my notes, um, which surprised me. Um, so I thought we could have a look at it together. Now the thing which surprised me is this, and I'll just throw you over to the uh, microscope and let's have a look at this guy. Now it does say on there, uh, 2N2222, which is what I was expecting because that's what I recall ordering. But underneath it, it says A331. Now, I've heard of A331, so I went looking for them. Here's the thing. The 2N2222 is an NPN transistor, but the A331 is a PNP transistor. So that's a pretty big difference. I mean, they're totally different types of transistors. They're not just like variations on the theme, right? So what have we got here? I don't know what we've got. I was expecting uh, 2N222. Uh, oh, hang on. We've got a little... What have we got here? Some little blob of something. What is that? I don't know. Fascinating. Well, I'm going to put him in the bin so he doesn't short something out. Now, um, we've got three wires here. Let's put this guy on. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, maybe you'll see it better if it's like that. Oh no, and I've knocked out the uh, knocked out the probes. Which is fair enough, I don't need the probes for this, I can just put it straight in. So, uh, let's just confirm. Yep, that's the right one. And let's try and get this guy in there. In he goes. Locked. Alright, now let's go into the M tester. And then we'll hit test. <clears throat> Transistor. NPN. Alright, good. So, um, let's just get the vital statistics uh, that we're expecting. So, um, let's rule the line on yesterday. Um, today I think is the 24th is it or maybe it's the 25th it's the 25th gee how time flies huh uh, so uh, 
let's put the date here, uh, 25-7-2024, and we've got uh, HFE, uh, we're going to have, um, I tell you what, let's uh, give ourselves a bit more space again, and let's have uh, 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 measured versus data sheet. Now when I say data sheet, I use the term loosely because I've actually got these specs straight off uh, chat GPT. Am I, am I mad? I don't know, maybe I'm mad. <clears throat> maybe chat GPT has hallucinated these specifications and I should go to a website and find out. Maybe. Let's start with what it gives us. So that's HFE equals 277 and then VBE equals uh, 0 0.717, 0 0.71V and then uh, IC is 7.4 milliamps. Alright, give me two seconds and I'll be back with the, uh, the data sheet values. Alright, well I'm back. So, um, yeah, okay, uh, I, I don't really understand transistors well enough yet to know what we're dealing with here, but we've got what I measured and we've got what um, uh, AliExpress told me I should expect. I had a look at some actual data sheets. There's heaps of companies that make these jelly bean transistors, the 2N2222s. So, um, uh, what... What, what am I going to tell you? that The HFE that we measured is in spec. It's supposed to be between 100 and 300 and it's 277. Now I don't know what, I know VBE is the, the voltage between the base and the emitter um, and I know that IC is the current through the collector um, but those values I think that, that we measured, I think that's just what it applied. It's not like, so I assume when it was doing its testing now that it tested with 0 0.71 volts between the base and the emitter and it tested with 7.4 milliamps at the collector so, so, uh, so I, um, I I don't think um, that, that these values should necessarily be appear over here and I think that th these are uh, maximum values uh, uh, so 800 milliamps max and the VBE at 6 volts I, I think maybe it's saying that you can go up to 6 volts I don't know if that's a maximum or average or, or, or what, what that is, I don't know. Uh, the HFE, um, hang on one second. All right, so the HFE is a measure of the DC current gain. It's basically uh, how much amplification the, um, uh, the transistor can provide. So I'll provide you with more uh, information about the HFE uh, metric in the show notes for this video. So. Um, uh, that 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 uh, that's the end of this little prelude. So thank you very much for watching, and please remember to hit like and subscribe. Here we are on the bench again. Now, uh, uh, I, um, uh, I've been recording uh, bits and pieces with me fooling around with this new uh, solder pot. And um, I, while I was doing that, the mailman came. So there's, uh, there's another uh, parcel here um, to look at. So I thought before I post this video, I'll, um, I'll show you what's in the... Uh, in the in the new parcel we'll add that to our 
video and I'll re-render the thing um, and I'll, I'll include this footage that I've just recorded with the solder pot. Now one of the problems we might have is that I had my music playing in the background while I recorded that part of the video because I wasn't planning to release it on the main channel and I was thinking I might even just uh, tape, tape over it. So uh, not exactly sure how this is going to play out yet. Um, but uh, let's just record me opening up the other package um, and then I'll try and mix it all together in some sort of a sensible-ish kind of a way in the editing box. This has got down to 34 degrees now, so that's uh, that's good. And turn him off and take him out. <clears throat> and I might as well keep the, uh, the dust covers on these things. Why not? And I'll put him back in his little drawer where he goes. Uh, wonderful. I'm going to use one of my uh, Velcro uh, cable tidies. I got a whole swag of these guys. You might have seen in one of my recent unboxing videos, I organized my uh, cable tidies. So this is them. You just uh, put it around about like that through there and then tighten him up and then he just wraps up like that and that is one cable tidied so I'm just going to put him away in his drawer which is over here all right now I did say I'd show you the uh, <coughs> the tinning job that we did so let me show you the tinning job that we did as promised now this here was just a bit of flux and it, it caught fire when I threw it in the in the solder pot. Uh, you'll see that probably. You probably already saw it in this video. So um, this is all done with now. The temperature is uh, much lower than it was, so it should be safe to handle. Um, now if I throw you over to there we go. There you can see that. Uh, the uh, insulation melted quite a lot, didn't it? And uh, if I can get a better, see if I can uh, get you a better focus. Yeah. So a uh, little bit of black stuff there, not fully tinned all the way up, but that's not surprising because we didn't actually have a full solder bath, did we? We just had one little glob of solder in there. So I'm not sure if that black stuff will polish off. Um, let's hit it with one of our brushes. This looks like a job for the dirty brush. Look, you can see dirty, the dirty brush. All right. And now that the, the heat is gone, I can risk a bit of uh, isopropyl on the mat. I'm a bit cautious about alcohol around heat. I don't want it to catch fire. Now, that black stuff did clean up a little bit, didn't it? I'm still going to hit it with some uh, isopropyl though. <sighs> so there we go, scrub a dub dub. Let's have a quick uh, squiz. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, I have to say, for for a first like impromptu kind of tinning job, I think it came up pretty good. Came up pretty good indeed. Now I'm just going to chop off that bit of stuff and put my wire back where it was. Um, we won't be needing this. Um, so. Uh, does that conclude? Oh no, I'm going to show you the other uh, the other package which just arrived. So let's uh, let's pop that open. Let me throw you back over to. Uh, gee, I keep forgetting that that microscope is on. I've really got to get uh, I've got to get with that and make sure I don't leave it on microscope uh, when I stop using it. I think eventually I'll uh, get a bit more used to uh, how these things work. All right, well, 
One, two, three, and then there's another packet as well. Let's open this guy up. Well, it looks like the extra goodies are just uh, USB cables. USB cables from China. And there's basically uh, two types by the look of it. So we've got uh, uh, USB uh, A to, uh, it's just basically a splitter. Uh, and I've got three of them, they're all the same. And then these one, oh, no, what have we got here? Uh, this one is a splitter, it goes three ways. So these are two, two, two. This is three. And then there's these ones, which are the same but with right angles, I believe. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get these out of the package without ripping it so that I can scrapbook it. I keep a scrapbook with all of my uh, electronics covers and bags and boxes and such so that I can refer to it if I need to uh, in the future. So this is a, is a USB that bends one way at the top and this one I believe is the same thing but bends the other way. So let's just confirm that. Alright. So, uh, uh, yep. So they bend the opposite ways. So we've got bendy bendies, and we've got straight throughs, and we've got uh, a whole bunch of, of these ones that uh, that that are just uh, dual dual splitters, not a three-way split. So uh, let's take them out of their boxes. Now I'm going to install one of them over there on my uh, on my lights. You can see uh, the lights when I uh, start my videos. I've got my Xbox light and I've got my on-air light and uh, those things are uh, <coughs> powered from some USB cables uh, and I had to install a uh, resistor, a potentiometer in fact, uh, in series with it so that I could uh, turn the power down because it was too bright and when it's too bright it's just a big blur on the camera. Anyway, the problem is that the I solved the problem for the on-air light, but I didn't solve the problem for the Xbox light. So I'm hoping with this I can use my potentiometer to power both after I split it out. So I'm going to split it out, the USB power, into two, um, and hopefully I'll be able to, uh, <coughs> to, to mix it. It just depends on the ratio of power that gets drawn from the various equipment. Um, so it may work or it may not work. We'll find out. Um, so yeah, okay, um, that's everything. Um, I am going to show you uh, the footage of this extra unboxing and I am going to show you the footage of the uh, solder pot. Um, so this should be the end of the video uh, that I'll remake uh, uh, now with this extra footage. So um, that concludes this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and please remember to hit like and subscribe.